So yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I go way back, back when we were still using uh, black powder. You know, all that kind of stuff. Bayonets, you know, we didn't have all the cool stuff. But no, I actually, uh, I was trained to go to Vietnam in the 70s. Um, and I was actually the last SEAL platoon to train to go to Vietnam. And uh, they stopped sending SEALs on my platoon. So you spend two years preparing to go to war and they say, no, nope, so you can't do it. So it did have an effect on me. That's why I'm still mentally ill today. But um, it's like, you are you know, when, you're, when you want to become a Navy SEAL, that's what you want to do. It's like if you want to be a pro football player, that's what you want to be. You know, and that's, then, and that's why you're, you're born to be what you are, especially military. Military people are born to be what they are supposed to be because they're, they're volunteer. Back in the 70s, they drafted us. Right. And, you know, it, it's a culture shock, you know, because, you know, you get off of, you know, in high school, you get out of there and you run into that six foot five monster that just came up and talked to you. And he's <laughs> drill sergeant ripping you and telling you all kinds of things about your mother you ever didn't know. <laughs> you know, push up, <sighs> you know, you can't even do 20, 20. I can't even count that hot, you know, Gee, what are you talking, 20, you know, and, you know, you have this super uh, just culture shock and so when you go through boot camp it doesn't matter whether it's navy you know air force army marine corps they're all designed to do one thing break you down tear you down make you into a worm right and give you that thing called discipline holy mackerel and you have to understand if if this thing is, is directed toward the military guy. You have, you have to understand what the military actually did for you. It tore you down and gave you discipline. And once you understood that, it puts you into a group. Once you finish boot camp, now you learn to become a team. So what it didn't really matter where, what you went into, you had to learn to work as a team. But you had that military discipline, okay? And, you know, for the SEALs, it's, it's a little bit insane. It's a little, you know, six months of pure hell. You know, I was crack up about the waterboarding thing, you know, it's, oh, it's torture, waterboarding, you know what, go through hell wait, try that, I'll take waterboarding over any of that, any ditch, and, and when you go through hell wait, they get you all wet and sandy, and they make you run in out of the water at three o'clock in the morning, this is, now, smart people don't join the SEALs, okay, dumb people do that, okay, because <laughs> you got to be really dumb to want to go and do that and actually not quit, Okay, and they quit by the truckload, believe me. But um, you you go through that, and it, it's the, the shock and the military mindset of pushing you through something to a place where you you never would dream that you would go. And so you have to understand when you were in the military, they gave you a lot of great tools. So that when you get out of the military, use those tools. Be confident in yourself. Don't take. Don't just be second. You know, like when I got out of the military in the seventies. You got to realize in the 70s, I was a baby killer. If you're in the military, older people know this. You younger people don't know about that, but I was a baby killer. So I was treated like crap when I was in the military. And my heart used to go out for these Marines and these guys just come back from Vietnam and they're all shot up, blown up, and they're like, hey, you're a baby killer. And I, I remember that very shockingly. Okay, so it was a shock for me. You know, in, two, in uh, 2000, 1999, when we're in the first Gulf War, I was recalled to active duty. So um, I went back to SEAL Team 1, where I really started with. And, um, uh, you know, I remember walking down the street and I was, you know, military uniform on and everything. People are walking and go, thank you for your service. It was so great. And I'm like, whoa. You know, I was shocked. But it was, wow, what a great feeling that was. What a great change. And even today, people come up and I, um, it still gets to me that people come up. Sorry. Sorry, I did not expect that. No more emotions. Okay. Um, but um, people respect what you do, and they know what you put on the line because you do put it on the line. And I've been there, done that. I've been shot, frag, missiles, mortars, you name it. It's come at us. And um, you, you do it because you love this, the people of this country, you know? And military, you gotta realize that's your strength. 
So when you get into the, the uh, civilian population and you start to try to become something. So when I first got out of the military, my first job was working in a ship repair company and I was sweeping floors. I literally was sleeping, sweeping floors because I was going to college, playing football, and I needed, I needed a job that I could take in the evening, work in the evening. And so what they do is they just, you know, they knew me and, hey, man, you're a SEAL, yeah, you're a cool guy. I'll go sweep this floor, clean that up, clean up, I'd have this list. So I'd just do everything on the list. Go back and they kept going, man, this dude, this guy's badass. So they just kept adding more stuff to the list. And then, you know, next thing you know, they brought in this giant pump, and just pulled it off the bilges of a ship and it had rust all over it and this thing, this big bolts on it, this big around. And they told me, clean this thing up. And they left these, all these things on the tools. And they, they, they left these things that are called slugging wrenches. And they're this big around, because the bolts are that big around. You have to put it on there. And you take a literally a, a sledgehammer that's this long and hit these bolts as hard as you can. And you hit them as hard as you can, and they don't do nothing. So then you have to take a torch and heat up the, the bolt and then hit it. And so I, but my job, I was going to clean that thing up. That thing was going to spark. I didn't care if it took to four o'clock in the morning. You know, I've been through hell wait. This is nothing, you know? So I cleaned this thing up and they come back in. This thing is shining. I put it in a, they have an acid bath. They put the metal in there and they have sandblasters. I clean this thing up, man. It's all laid out perfect. They come and I go, dang, wow, badass, dude. Could keep giving this guy more stuff, you know? So, you know, I'm going to college, you know, and then uh, next thing you know, I'm starting to look at their contracts, you know, and I go, college, I'm getting educated. So, which is, you know, one thing about school, after going through the SEALs, yeah, because I struggled in school. You know, I was ADD. I'm, I was a teacher's worst nightmare. Most SEALs are. We're not, we're not really, you know, most, most SEALs, they're usually the bastard child in the class, right? And... So, but because we, we are so ADD. Now, in my opinion, ADD is a misdiagnosis. I think ADD people are gifted. I think it's absolutely incorrect. I think they are, you need to challenge that person. So, and so, but that's what you do when you go through BUDS. That's what it is. They challenge you. They make you run all over the place. Then they sit you down. After you're all tired and everything, now I can listen. Oh, wow, well, yeah. That's not school, yeah. And what am I learning? I'm learning about blowing things up. I'm really interested in this. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> this is awesome stuff. You know, I can listen to that. And, you know, so when I went to college, college was like a breeze to me. I mean, school was nothing after that because I could sit down and actually listen because I was motivated and I knew what I wanted to do. So I'm going to college, working, working my way up. And I used that military drive. Nobody could beat me at anything. So when I started playing football, first day of football, they're making us do these 100-yard strides, trying to see how, who's fast, who ain't. You gotta do 10 100-yard stride. Navy SEAL boy beats everybody the first one, second, third, fourth, and then I can hear all these guys, oh, he'll wear out, he'll wear out, you know, you know he'll wear out, you have no idea. So they get up in the 10th one, they all figure, oh, now we're gonna put out. Didn't work, friggin' smoked them, you know, because I was driven to be just, and you know, God also gives me you know, the gifts to physically do things, but when you go through buds, it, it elevates any athletic ability you have, it's gonna be totally elevated. Your strength, your, your discipline, your conditioning, your heart, you know. Um, I remember breaking my arm in buds, fell off a car grenade, fell 30 feet, broke my arms, and, um, so now I'm in the hospital and the nurse comes up and she puts a stethoscope on my heart to listen to my heart. And she, boom, 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 boom. whoa, she, back. she goes, dude, whoa. She started calling these nurses. You gotta listen to this guy's heart. This thing is going boom, 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 boom. I'm like, yeah, wow, that's cool. I guess, I guess that looks good for something, you know? But, you know, what I found is, is I applied myself, use that military background to go, these kids, like when, when I play college football, none of these kids had been through Hell Week. I mean, they were like kids. You, you, you talk to this guy, 6'5". I had, I had offensive linemen like 6'5", 290 pounds. I say, hey dude, and I would, they were scared to death of me. Scared to death of me because they knew I was a Navy SEAL, and they thought that I would, you know, kick their ass, or which would not happen. They'd have to go, 
you know, but, um, I saved these guys in all kinds of barroom fights and stuff like that. So they, you know, they, they, uh, they had tremendous respect for me. So I realized that, you know, the maturity level that I had over these other guys was super. So you use those skills and those talents to help you as you go through anything. If you're in the military and you're trying to get out and you want to go do something, don't worry about make failing. Failing is, is not the issue, because I've had my life go like this, and it will go like this. You don't learn much up here. Where do you learn the most? You learn down there. And that's, that's what gives you depth. That, you know, I've lost everything more than I can even say. I've been homeless, homeless twice. I've lived in a van, you know, and the second time I didn't get a van, I didn't have nothing, you know? And, uh, you know, then I worked in the CIA. I was making 200 grand a year. 2011, got spinal meningitis, boom, lost everything. Back to square one. Had got nothing, I had no support, nothing. I literally had to dig myself out of the hole. And I was sick for a lot, of, a lot, a long time, six, seven months before I could finally do normal stuff. So I had to dig myself out of that hole and then we started the Warfighter Academy. And when we, the Warfighter Academy, what do we do? First thing we do is we go, here's the safety lecture, here's your goggles, here's your gun. We don't teach you nothing. We don't teach you nothing at first. We take you, you two get over there, and you two get over there, and there's all these barricades in between. You go, ready, go. And they go after each other, and they attack. And we know that they're gonna screw everything up, and that we tell them our, their first day, your job today is to screw everything up. <laughs> so all y'all be uh, A students today, and their job is to screw everything up. All so we do is videotape it. And it that's the way life is, it's about, learning from your mistakes. So people in the military have to realize you've been given a big gift that you have. For people that are in college, they don't have your background. They don't have that discipline. They don't have that bonding, especially for you war veterans that have been through some really strenuous things. You get really tight in those teams, and you're trying to look for what, is, what it is I want to be when I grow up kind of a thing. You know, just let it go. You'll find out what your passion is. It took me a long time to figure it out. I mean, I was almost... 35, 36 before I finally that I worked and found what I wanted to do when I grew up. And I started going back to training people how to basically, you know, shoot and scoot. And that's what my passion is. And that's where I belong. And that's what we do is we take these guys and try to rebuild, rehabilitate. You know, most of my instructors are wounded warriors. So their whole thing is we want to bring these guys back, you know, and challenge them. and. Put them back in that family because that's what they were meant to be. And you know, wounded warrior, he's a, he's a guy that's out there playing football, playing basketball, whatever the game may be. But his is is he's a marine or he's an army guy or he's a pilot or whatever. He's a sailor on a ship and he gets wounded, can't play in the game anymore. So um, he's he's lost. He doesn't he that this is what I want to be and I'm not that. And so you have to figure out how do I how do we bring these guys back? So. <clears throat> That's one of the things we do at the Warfighter Academy is we try to bring these, help these guys come back. And now, now they're around the guys like them. What's even better, they're being taught and trained and working side by side with guys just like them that were wounded warriors that know what it's like to come out of that, okay? Because there's a lot of stuff. I mean, most of the medical stuff is pump you up with drugs, anti this, anti that, you know, and, you know, anti-psychotic this, anti-depressant, anti-inflammatory, anti-everything, anti-human brain. And these guys just don't even know what planet they're on. So, so how do you get these guys back? You know. So that's, that's some of the stuff we do. But you in the military, it's not about you're going to be this great thing in the sky. It's about first you have to get out and figure out what you want to do, and then start every day. You're you're going to work harder and better every day to get better at what you do. So. You know, it's, you gotta realize the military is giving you a great gift and use it to your max, use it to your max ability because you do have that capability, believe you me. Is that military is, is nothing like civilian world as far as how much they train you and the discipline and, you know, especially when you're hanging it out and you're overseas, you're deployed and there's a lot of responsibility going on there, you know. And you come back here and you're, uh, you're assistant manager at McDonald's, you know, how easy how is that, you know, you can, you can do this stuff. You can work your way into it. Go to college, whatever it is, make it happen. Cool.